Um, could you outline your steps of procedure in detail for setting up a paddock with polybraid? Thanks for all your help, guys. It's much appreciated. Setting up a paddock? Um, how do we want to tackle this? Like, <laughs> it depends on the paddock. It depends on the paddock. Um, I mean, the first thing, I guess the first thing we do before we even get out there which we don't do all the time because we've done it long enough now where we can eyeball it. But back in the beginning, it was really helpful to look at a map um, and and like, like look at a map and look at the forage that's available and get a bead on, all right, what do I have feed-wise? You know what I mean? And how many splits am I gonna be able to get out of like this this paddock? How many days, you know? Um, and then and once you sort of got it figured out like where you're gonna run your wire, like, I mean, the nuts and bolts of of actually putting it out is, is fairly simple. Yeah, so we, with our four-wheeler, yeah. we drive up to the one end, because all let's just talk about a paddock that's completely enclosed in high, one strand high tensile. So we'll drive to the spot we want to start splitting it. We've got a little slide out rack that holds the reel, yep. tightens down, you put the reel in, handle in there, and then you pull the, 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 the little oh, brain up braid out, tie it to a plastic handle, and we hook it on to the fence. The fence is hot at all times. And then one person is riding on the four-wheeler and he has a stack of posts right next to him. And so he can, you know, he can drive and throw posts. And then the other two are following behind. One person steps in the post, the other person hooks them on. And uh, we'll drive to the end of the paddock. And then once it's ready to, ready to go, we'll, we'll get the measurement, wrap the wire around the reel, and hook the reel on hot, making sure you're touching the insulated, insulated parts, of the, parts of the reel. <laughs> hook it on hot, and at that point, the reel's hot, and then we're good to go. So, yep. then to roll it up, we'll go to the we'll drop one person off at the handle, then drive the other the other two will go to the other end, and then we'll make the reel cold. Give the guy on the other end a tug so he can untie the the handle. Then he walks carrying picking up posts on the way to the four wheeler while the other guy reels it. Yeah, so that's the way that's we, we do it. Yeah, take up and put down a fence. The the most like the hardest part to to get to understand and to get good at is the is the is the understanding like how much feed do I need to give them? Mm -hmm. And people like I've I've gotten questions about that all the time. Like how do you figure out, you know, how, how many acres to give them or whatever? And we don't count out you know, oh, we need to make sure we're giving them 6.5 acre paddocks every day. You know what I mean? Like, because it depends. On it the, depends on the, the shape. Quality. Yeah, because it, it depends on a lot of factors. It depends on the shape of the field. It depends on the accessibility to water. It depends on the quality of the feed, what time of year it is, what their nutritional requirements are. Is there a lot of lactating cows? Is it a bunch of bulls? Is it, you know, like, anyway, it, it depends on a ton of factors. And so, basically, like, as a rule of thumb, what you can do is give them what you think they would need, you know, for a day, however often you're moving them, every day, every other day, half a day, whatever it is, give them what you think they need in that paddock, and then come back to move them and evaluate your height. If the grass is grazed a lot shorter than you wanted it to be, give them a 25%, 50% bigger area, and evaluate again. Is the grass too tall? Is it too short? And you're gonna start, by monitoring your grass, you're gonna start to understand, okay, this is about as big a paddock as I need to give them for you know in the springtime you know what i mean or this is as big a pack as i need to give them in the winter to ration out stockpile all those things are going to come with just experience and 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 looking and observing how the animals are performing and what the grass looks like because what's the worst you're going to do yeah the other day you're going to either they're going to be a little bit short on feed or they're going to have way too much feed and either one is not really that much of a problem, you know. Yeah. One, you, you maybe make them a little bit hungry, but then you're going to be moving them the next day anyway. So. And you can give them all they need to eat the next day. So. And the other one, maybe you wasted a little bit of forage, but next time it'll be there around when you come back around the farm, so you can yeah. raise it then. It's like people, it seems it seems a lot more high consequence in the beginning than it actually is. Like you think like, oh, I need to really make sure that I'm nailing the amount of forage that I'm giving them or whatever, and it's like, a very low risk, like low concern decision, basically. Yeah. You just, as long as you're paying attention. Yeah, because if you're rotating them, it's not like that's all the grass you have, you know? Like yeah. you hit it, you leave, yeah. you let it recover, and you'll come back. And 
it'll be fine. Yeah. So it's just about being observant. You can't you can't go up there like with your blinders on and just be like, I have to give them this number of paddocks every day or this size of paddock or whatever. You're gonna you're gonna run into some issues if you start doing that. And that's it's a whole other topic, but that's sort of the reason why we don't use permanent paddocks. And for the, like by permanent paddocks, I mean you know single single move size paddocks like we have like already set already set like permanent wise like they're always the same every time whereas we've got these huge paddocks that are divided up and it's just so that like you can fence something without having to tie two reels together type deal um and that gives you a huge amount of flexibility to be able to vary paddock size depending on all those factors we were talking about um so yeah it's a whole other discussion but it it's definitely it's more, more complicated and requires more skill and thought and effort as far as planning it out, as opposed to just opening a gate and letting them go in. Um, obviously rotating via permanent paddocks is better than just set stocking, but temporary paddocks are gonna be uh, like another step up from there as far as animal performance, land performance, um, flexibility, a lot of factors, so. The whole fencing discussion is a is a, is a rabbit hole in and of itself. You can just you can do a whole episode. There's a lot of these, those, these topics. Yeah, just <laughs> just go. Yep.